Good evening, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project, Magnetic Reversal News, Sacred Geography, and Shinrin Yoku, bringing you a grand solar minimum update Thursday, December 15th, around 3 p.m. Mountain Time 2022. 13 M flares in the last 36 hours. The good news is that none of them are headed towards Earth. Now, the big story wild winter storm slams the Northeast with ice after we had tornadoes in the South and a blizzard up north. Keep calm. It's boom time. And the blizzard continues. Blizzard warnings for many areas through noon Friday. Here's a public safety alert from South Dakota. Attention, no travel advised across South Dakota. Many roads are blocked. Stay safe. We're talking wind gusts 40 to 50 miles per hour, whiteout conditions across much of the region. And the snow is going to continue. 29 inches of snow and counting on the North Shore as the winter storm continues there as well. Minneapolis, St. Paul, call snow emergency after overnight snowfall. And 11 or more inches is coming to that region as a snow emergency declared in Virginia. And a foot of snow could be headed for Lewiston and Auburn. Heads up. New England, Maine gets a winter storm warning with heavy snow expected Friday and Saturday. And don't leave out Alaska. Record-setting snowfall gives Anchorage the wettest year ever. That's true, 2022, 27.65 inches. The wettest year on record, beating out 1989 with 27.55. The records are falling as impactful ice is making driving hazardous in Pennsylvania and West Virginia. Then heavy snow is coming for the Northeast as a coast-to-coast winter storm is going to create havoc. Now, tornadoes hit, hit the south yesterday and Arabi community for the second time this year. Almost the same exact track. Let's take a look at some of those Snow totals over the last 72 hours. You can see the system is moving east and wreaking havoc. Now Wisconsin, Minnesota with heavy snow. North Dakota, South Dakota, many areas with over two feet. And this snow is moving east. There is the storm here. One low, secondary low forming on the coast, forming that nor'easter. And that is how it's going to go. The snow is going to linger here in the plains as the nor'easter deposits its global warming goodness over the weekend, Saturday, here's Sunday. There's your fun day in Maine. It will be some heavy totals. Let's take a look. So let's just walk it through Thursday. It's going to be heavy snow through central Pennsylvania. We'll be picking up the most, probably 16 inches there. And as the snow continues to fall in the plains, take a look at that. Another 8, 10, 11 inches will be falling in Minnesota, North Dakota, South Dakota as the snow moves its way this weekend, Saturday and Sunday, up into New England with a huge swath of 16 inches or more. Not much getting to the coast. New York, New Jersey, that's going to be Christmas Eve. Take a look at this setting up here, December 21st, 22nd. Here's the 23rd. Take a look at the storm that's coming to the south on the 23rd. And here's Christmas Eve and Christmas Day. So we could have a historic nor'easter showing totals of 16 inches by the shore in South Jersey. The Del Marva all the way down through... The Carolinas, even Georgia picking up some heavy snow. Holy macaroni. So we're going to keep a close eye on that system as another nor'easter is on the model following that up. And we could still see snow in all 50 states before Santa comes. Powerful storm continues across the northern U.S. and Florida. The powerful and massive multi-day storm continues across the northern U.S. and Florida today. Heavy snow, gusty winds, and blizzard conditions continue across the upper Midwest, while frozen precipitation of ice and snow begins in the central Appalachians and interior portions of the northeast. Meanwhile, severe storms with a few tornadoes and scattered damaging winds possible in Florida. You can see that yellow band down there. Click on your county for more information. We still have blizzard warnings and watches in dozens of counties in four states. So if you don't have to drive, stay alive. Now take a look at this. Train plowing 48 inches. It is quite pleasing. And if you didn't know how they do it up in the Sierras or other areas with heavy snow, well, they use heavy equipment. And take a look at this amazing plowing going on here by what appears to be a plow train. Pretty cool. And when I saw the video, I was just fascinated by the amount of snow that this baby's moving. And there's another train back behind it following it up.
Pretty cool stuff. All the links to everything we discuss will be below the video. Seismic update. We just had a quake in Alaska. Coho 3.0. Biggest quake on the map right now. 5.7 in El Salvador. Couple rumblers around the Ring of Fire. Nothing uh, of note. We do have some activity up here in the Cascades, specifically near Mount Rainier. So I went real quick to take a look at the Pacific Seismic Network and check out the stats of Mount Rainier. And in fact, we do have an uptick at Rainier. There has been 29 quakes in the last month. That is double what it's normally occurring over the last few months. St. Helens has a tick down and Rainier is now um, the mountain of choice here that we have to keep a close eye on because these larger quakes are happening just south of Mount Rainier and now flurry of activity happening up on Rainier, about 30 quakes in the last 30 days. Most of it in front and west of the mountain, not actually up on the caldera here, just three or four quakes. So we're keeping a close eye on the Pacific Northwest for you. Any uptick, you'll be the first to know. Ho, ho. Worldwide Volcano News Update. Sabancaya, Fuego, Popo, Krakatau today. Two puffs and passes. Nothing spectacular. You can see one of the puffs here coming from Krakatau Volcano. Villa Rica in central Chile. Strong heat radiation within the crater area is continuing. In Cotopaxi, they're monitoring the gas emissions and temperatures there after a couple major puffs. Now, space weather. We've had a flurry of activity. 13 M flares in the last 36 hours. According to ISWA and all of the solar wind prediction, there is no coronal mass ejections headed our way, which is good news. We do have one sunspot region of interest that is facing Earth. Uh, below you can see an updated look at the southwest quadrant of the sun. Sunspot region 3165, the source of almost continuous C flares and the lower level M flares that we've been seeing, is rotating closer to the limb, and anything coming from this spot is likely directed away from Earth. Another region we're watching is 3163 here, which has gr grown over the last few days, is currently facing Earth, does have magnetic complexity, and solar flares above the M1 threshold will remain highly likely during the next 24 hours. So there's also currently a 15% chance for major X flares, and we'll keep a close eye on 3163, as it appears as if uh, we are now entering another small flare here. No, just see in the C range. Okay, so we will keep a close eye on that for you. As all is quiet on the solar wind telemetry, we're down at around 350 kilometers per second, and everything is acting, well, quite normal. So that would mean that we're probably around KP0. Yeah, we're just at KP1.3 maybe, and it's been quite low for days. Now, Mesmerizing new NASA images show the lava on one of Jupiter's moons that helps form the planet's auroras. Now take a look at this. This is a thermal image, actually infrared. And you can see all the hot spots on Jupiter's moon Io. That's pretty fantastic. This is a very active moon, and they're claiming that they're now measuring the magnetosphere of this moon and its connection to Jupiter. So fascinating stuff going on with planetary geology. Now, after a report on toxic salmon in the Columbia River, lawmakers are calling for action. Thousands of indigenous people, in fact, 68,000 tribal member, members, rely on this salmon, and it's contaminated. For the investigation, ProPublica and Oregon Public Broadcasting purchased 50 salmon from the native fishers along the Columbia River, and then paid to have a certified lab test them for 13 metals and two classes of chemicals known to be present in the river. The testing showed concentrations of two chemicals, mercury and polychlorinated biphenols, or PCBs, that the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency, as well as Oregon and Washington's health agencies, deem unsafe at the levels consumed by many of the tribal members living in the basin today, as well as non-tribal members. So this is disgusting. The salmon in the Columbia River are toxic. More disgusting, genetically modified tobacco plants produce cocaine in its leaves. What could go wrong here? Researchers have reproduced the entire biochemical pathway for how cocoa plants make cocaine in another plant. Tobacco which according to them could help people manufacture the drug for scientific study or perhaps make tobacco a little bit more addictive. 
absolutely insane. On this day in history, December 15th, 1791, the Bill of Rights was ratified, codifying unique freedoms in this new nation. And those freedoms are rapidly eroding. And that's a boom to knowledge. Proper prior planning prevents piss poor performance. Hope you got something out of the video. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't. Share this with like-minded people. Support the work we do. Become a Patreon. We love you. Be safe. And that's a boom.